Hi there. In this video, we're going to talk about the roles and regulations of cyclin D, a protein that is very important in controlling the cell cycle and is commonly dysregulated in human cancers. So before we get into talking about human cancers, we have to talk about the normal function and the regulation of the cyclin D protein. So the cyclin D protein, its levels are typically very low in the G1 phase. Um, its levels rise when cells are getting signals to grow through, for example, growth factor receptor pathways, and we'll talk about why those levels rise um, later in this video. But I just want to talk about initially, what's the function of cyclin D? What does this protein do in the cell? So to talk about the function of cyclin D, we have to talk about the uh, its partners, uh, the proteins called cyclin-dependent kinases, CDKs. And the cell makes a number of these kinases, these cyclin-dependent kinases, CDKs, and these kinases are inactive in the cell unless they bind their partners, which are in fact cyclins, hence the name cyclin-dependent kinases. So CDKs are inactive typically in uh, phases of the cell cycle where their matching or partner cyclin is absent. So when cyclin D levels are very low, CDK4 and CDK6, they're kinases, but they are non-functional. As cyclin D levels rise, cyclin D protein will bind these cyclin-dependent kinases, specifically CDK4 and CDK6. When cyclin D binds these kinases, that activates these kinases, allowing them to phosphorylate their substrate. Um, so really what cyclin D is, is a, a cofactor that activates a kinase. Now, what do these kinases do? Well, the important thing that we're going to talk about these kinases performing in the cell is phosphorylating, right? These are kinases, so they're going to phosphorylate their substrate. Their substrate is a protein called RB, or retinoblastoma. And so CDK4 and CDK6, when they are bound to cyclin D, will phosphorylate RB. What's RB? We'll talk about that in a separate video. So cyclin D is clearly a very important protein that regulates the transition of most human cells from the G1 phase to the S phase. So cyclin D is tightly regulated many different ways. And I want to talk about two different ways cyclin D can be regulated in cells, uh, regulated at the transcriptional level and the post-translational level. So we're going to talk about the transcriptional level first and the post-translational level second. So when we talk about regulating um, something at the transcriptional level, we're talking about regulating at its gene level. So I've drawn here the gene that codes for the cyclin D protein. So the name of the gene is called CCND1 that codes for the cyclin D1 protein. And I've drawn upstream of the transcription start site a uh, promoter. And we know that transcription factors can bind promoters and activate gene transcription, turning genes on. And that's a very key way that cells regulate genes by regulating transcription factors that bind at the promoter. So I want to introduce some transcription factors that regulate the cyclin D gene, also known as CCND1. There are many transcription factors that regulate um, the cyclin D gene. We're just going to touch on a few of them. And again, think about the fact that cells, when cells are in G1, we want to keep this gene off. When cells are transitioning uh, into S phase, they get a signal to grow, usually by uh, being exposed to growth factors. That's going to uh, activate many transcription factors and get the cell going, going into S phase and turn the gene on. But we'll talk first about cells in G1 and uh, the state of many transcription factors that um, result in this gene being off and the cyclin D levels being low. So let's introduce some transcription factors. Uh, first, we'll talk about FOS and June. These are two separate proteins. They are transcription factors. You typically find them um, in a complex called AP1. So it's a transcription factor, AP1, made of two proteins called FOS and June. Um, there are other transcription factors that can regulate the uh, CCND1 promoter, uh, a protein called beta-catenin. Um, that is a transcription factor. Another transcription factor called MYC. And finally, another transcription factor called STAT. So all of these are transcription factors. They actually combine the promoters of many different genes and can control 
the transcription of many different genes, but we're just going to focus their role on controlling the cyclin D gene. So, in cells that um, are in G1, uh, we know that there are signal transduction uh, pathways, kinase pathways in the cell that regulates protein activity. So, I've drawn three kinases that we've talked about previously, the ERK kinase, the AKT kinase, and GSK3 beta kinase. So these kinases, when cells are in G1, uh, we know that ERK and AKT, those kinases are inactive, and the GSK3 beta protein is active. And so under these conditions, um, GSK3 beta is phosphorylating beta catenin in June on certain amino acids. And uh, under these conditions, these transcription factors are typically inactive. And so what does that mean? It means that they are not activating the transcription of the cyclin D1 gene. And so this gene is kept off. There's not very much transcription of the CCN D1 gene, so there are very low levels of cyclin D protein. Now, let's look at a cell that is being exposed to growth factors, for example. So it is getting a signal to go into S phase. And so we know, and as we've talked previously, that uh, ERK and AKT kinases are activated in these cells, and the GSK3 beta kinase is inactive in these cells. And so under these conditions, uh, ERK can either directly or indirectly lead to the phosphorylation of FOS, June, and MYC, so um, adding phosphate groups to certain amino acids uh, in their amino acid sequence. Um, the beta-catenin protein you'll see now is not phosphorylated by GSK3 beta because GSK3 beta, as we mentioned previously, is inactive. Um, the STAT protein, uh, STATs are transcription factors that are regulated by a family of kinases called JAK kinases. And these are actually uh, kinases that are regulated by uh, um, cytokine receptors. So you see them uh, regulating the cell cycle in many hematopoietic cells immune cells. So under uh, conditions when cells are exposed to things like uh, cytokines, JAK kinases are active. They will phosphorylate STAT transcription factors. And under these conditions, all of these transcription factors that I've drawn here are in an active state. And so when transcription factors are in an active state, what does that mean? That means that they are bound, they're binding to promoters and they are recruiting RNA polymerase to come bind uh, to the promoter and begin transcription, producing mRNA. So I've drawn all these proteins crowded onto the cyclin D1 promoter. Do they all have to be up there at the same time? No, they don't. In fact, um, you don't need all of these proteins there. You might just need a subset of them there. So FOS and June, if they bound, they could turn on the cyclin D1 gene. If MYC is binding, it can turn on the cyclin D1 gene. Beta-catenin binds, it can turn the cyclin D1 gene on, um, and same with STAT. And so, uh, depending on the cell type, uh, depending on the signal transduction pathway activated in those cell types, you might just have uh, one set of transcription factors binding to the promoter. So you don't need all of them, you just need some of them, or one set of them, that are able to bind to the promoter and recruit RNA polymerase to the promoter, and allowing for transcription of the cyclin D1 gene, and uh, there, then you get translation and you produce cyclin D1 protein. So uh, the cyclin D1 promoter is actually very complicated. It's regulated by many different proteins. Um, and I just want to talk about a few, like I said here, these transcription factors that can regulate um, the cyclin D1 gene. So uh, I'm going to stop this video now, and in the next video, we're going to talk about how you regulate cyclin D levels at the post-translational level. This one, this video has talked about regulating cyclin D at the transcriptional level. And like I mentioned, when cells are in G1, many of these transcription factors are inactive, so the gene uh, is kept off. Uh, when cells are getting a signal to go through the cell cycle, transcription factors become activated uh, and bind the promoter, recruit RNA polymerase, and now cyclin D is transcribed and translated, and cyclin D protein levels begin to rise.